Over the previous week, we have seen many of the greatest athletes in the world finally return to the outdoor track to open up their 2023 seasons. In just seven days, the non-stop action and crazy times achieved by these athletes left the world in complete shock. And again, this season does look as though it could be one of the best ever, and that's comparing it to the previous few seasons, which were also quite incredible. For this opening week, we saw Shakari Richardson make her grand return to the 100 meters, anchoring her team at the Texas Relays with a time of 10.02, and then she absolutely dominated her competition at the Miramar Invitational, running a wind-assisted time of 10.57. Over in South Africa, we saw the world record holder in the 400 meters, Wade von Niekerk, take his national championships with a convincing win in 44.17 seconds, one of the fastest season openers of all time. And finally, in this year's Texas Relays, we saw one of the greatest relay races ever in the collegiate scene, with the University of Georgia taking the victory in 2 minutes 58.82 seconds, a downright absurd season opener for this Georgia quartet, who averaged 44.7 seconds for this entire relay. These races only scratch the surface as to the growing talent and worldwide speed that these athletes are actually reaching. And speaking of historic speed, something happened at the University of Florida over this past weekend that just might reflect a new type of greatness in track and field. At the 2023 Florida Relays, we saw Joseph Von Belay, one of the most talented and unique sprinters in all of track and field, open up his season with a 100 meter appearance and also a 4x100 meter relay appearance. Now in the 100 meters, he achieved a time of 10.04, which is a very respectable time for a season opener, but it's really what he did in the 4x1 that truly deserves your attention. Now, for this race, we saw Andre de Grasse from Canada ultimately pull through with the victory, achieving a world-leading time of 37.8, and for his final 100 meters, he threw down a crazy finishing time of 8.90 seconds for the final 100. This is fast, I'm talking World Championship gold medal caliber racing, but if you'll notice, Joseph Von Belay was actually closing over the final 50 meters, but because of this rather jumbled baton exchange on the final leg, he wasn't quite able to match this 8.90 second clocking. However, what he was able to do was achieve one of the fastest top end speeds that we have ever seen. Now, fast top end speed is something that Fambele is an absolute master at reaching. Back in the 2021 Olympic Games, he actually achieved the fastest top end speed of any athlete in this field. Faster than Noah Lyles, faster than Kenny Benarek, even faster than Andre de Grasse, who went on to win the gold medal in 19.62 seconds. With this very interesting graphic, the Tokyo Games presented us with the ability to see just how fast these sprinters were actually running over the final 100. And with a closing top end speed of 38.5 kilometers per hour or 23.9 miles per hour, this was a very solid closing 100, representing some of the best sprinting strength in the world. Now, this graphic also shows us the full 200 meter race where an athlete slows down during their performance. It is very common to have some kind of decline over the final 50 meters of a half lap race. In fact, in this Olympic final, we can see that most athletes go from red into a pretty significant color of yellow, showing some kind of slowdown over the final stages. However, this common occurrence does not apply to Joseph von Belay, who brings some of the best strength to the final 100 of pretty much every 200 meter race in his career. We also saw this rather special sprinting capability in last year's World Championships, when Fambele closed his final 100 in 9.48, which was the second fastest close of the day, only behind Noah Lyles, who went completely crazy with a close of 9.16 seconds, which to this day is the second fastest closing 100 of all time. Seeing Fambele close is a very common occurrence, and it's very entertaining as he somehow closes the gap on athletes even 10 meters in front of him at times. And if you want to call it this, it very well could be his sprinting trademark that makes him so unique. So what exactly did he do in this 4x100 that made it so memorable? Well, he achieved a top end speed anywhere from 43.5 kilometers per hour to 43.8 kilometers per hour, which converts to roughly 27.1 miles per hour. This speed is lightning. With a running start, Fon Belay can actually achieve his top end speed relatively quickly. But man, when he really starts going, he is unstoppable. 
Even against someone like Andre de Grasse, Fambele is absolutely eating up ground with pure power sprinting, and he really does look as though he could run through a concrete wall at this speed. And with an actual smooth baton exchange, the final results of this race very well could have been quite different. With a top end speed like this, where exactly does this place him in terms of all-time performances? Well, to give you more context, for Usain Bolt's previous world record back in 2008, where he achieved a time of 9.69 seconds, he achieved a top end speed of 43.9 to 44 kilometers per hour. Now here's a graph of exactly where Usain Bolt's 2008 world record actually looked like. And it's important to mention that these 10 meter intervals represent an average top end speed during this stretch, which is why many do estimate that he hit a top speed of 44 kilometers per hour. Given that this is Usain Bolt that we're talking about here, this makes Fambele's 4x100 meter close quite historic. And while it doesn't quite reach the fastest top end speed ever, which was Bolt's new world record in 2009, where he hit a top end speed of 44.7 kilometers per hour, this is pretty crazy. And it is crucial to remember that this was Fambele's season opener, which leaves the remainder of 2023 completely open. What Fambele has managed to do since 2021 is pull through in many big time races with clutch performances. He did it in 2021 in the Olympic Games, he did it in 2022 in the World Championships, but in my personal opinion, his most memorable and special race was his 2022 NCAA Finals, not in the 200 meters, but in the 100 meters, where with some kind of superhero-like comeback, he went from dead last to first with a time of 10 seconds flat. This guy is just crazy. When you analyze Fambele's racing style, it makes sense that he would be an amazing anchor leg for the 4x100. And while we weren't quite able to see what his full flight, smooth transition relay race anchor would have looked like here, I want to show you guys a race that many people may have forgotten, and that is the 2022 NCAA Finals in the 4x100 relay. Now brace yourself, because this is absolutely crazy. Throughout this race, USC took the lead over the final bend before reaching the anchor leg split, and far behind, basically in another zip code, was Joseph Fonbele from Florida, anchoring this Florida team with a very daunting task. Looking at this lead, it's gotta be somewhere between five and eight meters, and there is just no way that Fonbele could make this comeback, right? Well, here's what happened. With a smooth baton exchange, Fonbele was on a mission. And just look at this man go. Late, but he can close like a house on fire. It's Southern Cal right now with Johnny Blockberger. Who here comes Joseph Fonbele? He doesn't catch him. Now he wasn't quite able to reach USC up front, who ultimately won this race in 38.49, but he was able to close to a very close second, only three one hundredths behind in 38.52. With a nearly impossible task of closing up to the lead, Fonbele responded to the call of greatness and almost pulled off an absolutely historic comeback. And now in 2023, we are seeing this man reach crazy levels of speed once again. Now it's important to remind ourselves that this is still the opening week and many athletes still have much faster times to reach in 2023. And this is exactly why this season could be the year of Fonbele. With a 4x100 split like this and a solid season opener in the 100 meters, I think it's pretty clear that Fonbele has improved both his start and his top end speed, which is a pretty intimidating prospect if you're a competitor of Joseph Fonbele. We have seen it so many times where this athlete closes on numerous runners up front, but the question has always been asked, what could he do if he got a better start in his sprints? The sub 10 second clocking and the sub 19.8 second 200 for Fonbele simply have to be just around the corner. And with these predictions in mind, I want to hear from all of you. How fast do you think Fonbele will run in 2023? And where do you think his placement will be in this year's World Championships? Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, until next time.